Hello everyone and welcome on the Papier de Rêve channel. I'm Ursula and today I will be painting with you uh, something really really different uh, about the cactus garden here in Barcelona. This painting is different just because I'm not using uh, really the same technique as I'm used to and also I've um, assembled my uh, reference picture with a lot of picture of the garden in order to make a uh, some sort of uh, portrait of uh, this garden and everything I like uh, in this garden. And now I'm painting this uh, like a photo montage uh, by painting one element at a time uh, without uh, being so free and liberate as uh, I'm used to in my other painting. Normally I'm painting just one uh, element uh, on my painting, so one flower or some kind of fruit or just one subject at a time. But here I want everything I love in this uh, garden to be on the paper. So uh, some foliage, some cactus, some flowers, I want everything here. And that's quite a, a challenge because I'm not used to, to do that, but uh, let's see if I'm up to it. If you want to have a look at my reference picture, uh, the photo montage I make just before uh, painting this uh, painting, uh, it will be up on uh, my blog. Uh, the link is in the description right below the video. I've used a lot of supplies in uh, this painting and this video is really really long so I will not showing all my uh, supplies in the video but you can find them in the description just below and also on the blog post. Uh, the link is in the description as always. But let's go back to the painting. As you see, I'm painting one element at a time. Uh, I try to uh, keep my elements in, uh, in sort of a rigid shape, uh, but I'm quite free in, on how I uh, let the color bleed in this shape. Uh, that's just because there is a lot of elements and I, I want them to be uh, really visible and not blur in one another. But when I'm not sure when uh, an object uh, ends and another uh, uh, starts, uh, I just uh, blur the edge of this uh, object as, I'm, as I was doing on the works uh, just uh, at the bottom of uh, this painting. And as I'm doing also with the cactus I'm painting right now, uh, I let this edge uh, between the works and the cactus very blur just because I do not uh, know how I want to treat that edge. Uh, and I just want to have some time to reflect and think about it so that I can take uh, the, a good decision a little bit later. My process to paint this first layer on each element is just to apply some paint and uh, water on the paper in the right shape and then I make uh, infuse some uh, more color into the shape so that so that the inside of uh, the shape uh, is very blurry and very soft, but the outside is really strong and straight. I'm doing it right now with the cactus. I use a turquoise color to uh, fill the shape with. This color is a mix of manganese blue and uh, amazonite genuine with a tiny, tiny touch of nickel azo yellow uh, if I want it to be a little bit more uh, warm. Uh, but uh, that's the base of the color. And then I will add a little bit more color if I want uh, a shadow in some place. And I will let this color infuse in the wet shape in order to have a really soft edge in the inside of the shape. I also like to add a little bit of lavender in the shape so that uh, the cactus gets some uh, uh, different feeling. Uh, it, I do not paint uh, reality and you cannot really see that color in reality, uh, but I think it's uh, um, it's working really great uh, with the color of the cactus and it gives a little bit of uh, emotion into it. 
And for each element in this painting, I will do the same. Uh, I paint a shape with one base color and then I'm adding uh, another color uh, to uh, suggest the shadow uh, in this uh, shape and to give the shape a little bit more uh, volume and depth uh, in this first layer. Of course, I will do other layers to add uh, a little bit of details in, uh, in that shape and more depth. Uh, but I like to start that way so that I have some kind of liberty uh, with uh, the um, colors uh, blurring into one another, but uh, keeping it uh, quite straight too, because I'm inside a shape and I'm not uh, painting all over my paper. There is quite a lot of element uh, in this paper, uh, different greens, different uh, shapes, uh, different objects, uh, but I want them to be linked in some way and I use the color to link them uh, between each other. Um, for example, all the green elements uh, contain uh, some Amazonite genuine. So this color will uh, be uh, on every single green element. Uh, in the cactus, in the, uh, the foliage at the top, uh, in the foliage, uh, the palm tree foliage uh, at the bottom, everything has Amazonite genuine. So this color will uh, unify all uh, these elements together. And that's also why I've used a little bit of lavender in the cactus because the lavender will uh, be in other part of the painting and it's also in uh, the rock shape at the bottom. So the lavender will be another unifier to this painting uh, and will tie everything together. And in the same ID, I'm just using two uh, yellow uh, in this painting. I'm using, uh, of course, nickel as a yellow uh, because it's a bright uh, yellow. It, uh, it gives a lot of shine, of sunshine into it. Uh, I'm also using a little bit, but really a little bit of Aussie red gold in order to uh, dim uh, the green a little bit down uh, so that they are a little bit more natural because uh, when you mix Amazonite genuine with nickel as a yellow you can have a sort of uh, green apple green and it's a little bit too strong for my taste. For this painting I'm using a rough paper. Uh, if you know me you know that I uh, quite like to paint on uh, hot press paper, uh, the smoothest paper uh, for watercolor, uh, just because um, it gives uh, a nice colors uh, and uh, you can have a really uh, interesting effect with it. But today I'm painting with the rough paper just because I do not have any more hot press paper and I, had, and, and I need to uh, order it uh, quite uh, quickly. But no matter what, I, will, I would have chosen anyway a rough paper for this painting uh, just because rough paper is a little bit more forgiving than hot press paper and you can work a little bit more your color, your shape, uh, your effect uh, with uh, this kind of paper uh, with a, a really rough surface. Uh, it's a little bit easier to paint uh, with it. And just because uh, the paper dry uh, in sort of a uniform way, you have more time to work with, you have more uh, less um, water bloom on it uh, if you make a tiny mistake and also you can remove quite easily some colors as I will do a little bit later. Uh, because this paper is quite strong and uh, it's, it's really uh, an easy paper to work with uh, when you are starting with watercolor. So now there are quite a, a few more uh, elements on uh, this painting. Uh, some palm tree uh, foliage, uh, nibiscus flower bud, some uh, hibiscus flower too. Uh, so it's coming together quite nicely. Uh, and I think that you can see a little bit more uh, precisely where I'm going uh, right now. 
And you can see that all my elements are on a white background for now, uh, but I do not want to keep that uh, white background. So I will have to paint around every shape I've made uh, until now uh, to the color of my background. And this is a really painful stage and uh, you have to work really patiently uh, and slowly, but not too slowly because the uh, painting is drying. So uh, if you want a smooth area, uh, you have to work quite quickly until uh, you uh, covered all the area and the area is all wet with paint. If you do not want to have some streaks uh, on this uh, part of his, your painting. I've sped up the process because it's always the same thing. I'm just applying some uh, mix of uh, wisteria and lavender. Uh, it's a really soft color and I like it a lot. But in the middle, as you see, uh, I'm uh, just making a gradient to the white, uh, just because I'm not really sure of uh, how I want to uh, work this area for now. There, there are uh, white flowers in the background in my ID. Uh, but I want to keep my uh, option open for now uh, because I'm not painting them right right now. So now it's time to add some uh, details uh, in all the shape. Uh, everything has dried completely, so I'm quite um, free to make uh, the second layer of every shape uh, now. Uh, so I'm using the same color as the base uh, of the shape. So right now it's uh, Amazonic Genuine, Nickel as a Yellow, and a tiny bit of OC Red Gold. Uh, but I try to get some darker colors. And for that, I'm adding a little bit of Indent Rain Blue uh, because it's a really, really dark blue. So it's uh, so much easier to get dark green uh, when you mix uh, the green with this color. And uh, with this mix, I can get uh, some shadows and some um, texture into uh, all the foliage on, uh, on my painting. You can see that I'm using just one brush for this painting and it's quite a tiny brush uh, for the size of, uh, of, of paper I have. Uh, but it's a really um, handy uh, brush uh, just because it's a flat brush but with um, a round shape uh, in the hair at the top. Uh, so it can hold a lot of water because the hair are also quite long and uh, it's natural hair. Uh, but I still have uh, a point uh, to work with uh, if need be. So I can paint uh, some large area with it, uh, but I also can uh, paint some details uh, with it, as you can see uh, in the leaves at the top. So it's a really versatile brush uh, and I can really make a lot of things with it and it's enough for this painting. I'm also adding another layer of uh, colors in the cactus uh, because I want a little bit more depth and uh, I want the color to be a little bit stronger than it is right now. And for that, I'm still using the same mix uh, of, uh, of colors that I've used in the first layer of this part of the painting. So manganese blue and Amazonite genuine, mostly. Uh, and a little bit of lavender just because uh, it adds uh, something uh, different uh, to, to the cactus. I don't have any particular strategy to work uh, this painting even though it's uh, quite a complicated painting. Um, I'm just painting the area when it's uh, totally uh, dry uh, so that uh, uh, I uh, avoid uh, some mixing that I do not want, uh, uh, some bleeding I do not want. But uh, mostly I take my time uh, really for this painting uh, just because I know that uh, some things are a little bit more delicate and uh, need a little bit more attention that uh, I'm used to. Uh, so this painting has taken me uh, two days to, to paint. And I think I have uh, one hour and a half of footage uh, of me uh, painting uh, this painting. Normally a painting for me is um, 30 minutes, 45 minutes and that's all. So it's quite uh, different uh, in, in this painting for me. 
I've started to paint uh, the flower uh, at the center of uh, this painting and as they are in the background uh, I'm just painting them really really freely uh, just and you have just an idea uh, of th that there is something uh, behind uh, but I do not want too much details uh, because there is a lot of things going on in this painting so I think that uh, this area uh, with less details is uh, quite needed right now. But as they are white flower in this background, I'm painting them uh, in a negative uh, technique uh, with a mix of um, lavender and yellow ochre just because this mix of uh, colors gets a really really nice gray, uh, a warm gray, very interesting and uh, that's, I, that's what I want for, for this uh, painting. It's a, a soft gray so it's, it goes really well uh, with the background, it goes really well with the work uh, at the bottom uh, because it's quite the same color. And now I'm uh, trying to uh, get some lighter uh, colors in uh, the cactus just because I've put a little bit too much color at the top uh, where there is a shine uh, on this cactus. Uh, so I'm using a, a brush with a flat uh, and a quite stronger hair that I'm used to uh, just because it will scrap delicately the color and lift it from the paper and I can get uh, some uh, almost white area uh, here in, uh, in uh, this uh, cactus shape. And I'm still adding more and more details, uh, a step by step. Uh, I'm adding a more darker color so that I can get uh, a little bit stronger uh, contrast in the painting. And uh, it also helps uh, for uh, the viewer eye to uh, travel in this painting from the foliage on the right top corner uh, to the cactus, to the palm tree foliage, to the hibiscus. And for the last set of uh, details I will add some uh, needles to the cactus. Uh, I will add some details in the hibiscus flower uh, because there is a pistil and uh, some colors uh, that I need to get there a little bit more. I'm using uh, a different brush right now because I need more details and I also need a little bit more control uh, with my brush uh, in order to apply the white gouache in the needle of the cactus. And I will keep uh, this uh, brush uh, to make uh, some other details in the hibiscus part, uh, but this time with watercolor, but uh, watercolor directly from the tube so that it has the stronger colors and it's almost like working with gouache, uh, but it's just watercolor. And the last touch I will add to this painting is uh, some uh, texture uh, with a watercolor pencil. Uh, I'm using quite a lot of them, but I will uh, note them all in uh, the description just below if you, if you are interested uh, in to see what I'm using. But I'm just adding texture in, in uh, some area, some, uh, like the cactus. I will uh, use that to um, darken uh, the shadows and give it a little bit uh, more uh, stronger um, contrast into the cactus. But I'm also using them in the foliage uh, so that you can see a little bit more the fiber of the foliage and also in the rocks of course because as I'm using uh, a rough paper it's very interesting to use it in the rocks. It adds uh, the, that uh, granular texture I want in, in the, that work. And this video is finally ending. Thanks for watching and I hope you like it. Please check the blog post for more information about this painting and tell me what you think in the comments. See you soon.